Welcome to Workflow Wednesdays. All right, what's up guys and welcome back to another video. As you can see, we got a new setup going here. I'm getting tired of moving this room around and this desk, but here we are. We're gonna try this new setup for a little bit and see how it works. This week we're talking film emulation LUTs and I'm gonna show you guys a quick workflow on how to apply it correctly so you get great results every time. Right before we get started though, I have a few things that I'm working on behind the scenes, including a beginner editing course that I've already started putting together. It'll be broken up over the course of several videos and include everything from importing your footage into Resolve all the way through to exporting and delivery. I think a lot of you guys would benefit from that and I've seen some comments and feedback that you guys want some more beginner stuff as well and editing tutorials, so we're gonna definitely do that as well. That being said, if you're new here, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. New videos go up weekly, talking all about filmmaking, reviews, and so much more. So if you're not already, please be sure to hit that subscribe button as it helps me out immensely. With that, let's get right to the video. Okay, so here we are in Resolve. I've got this clip in here and we're already on our hero shot. I wanna go for a film look here, so we want those punchy colors, lots of dynamic range, and one of the best ways to achieve that within Resolve is by using the built-in LUTs that come with Resolve. If we go under our LUTs tab in the Film Looks folder, we actually have a bunch of free LUTs that come with Resolve. If we hover over them here, we can see there's Kodak 2383 emulations, Fujifilm, and so on. Now, when film is printed, there are film print stocks that are used for projection, and it has an amazing look. If we pull up IMDb here real quick, we can actually look what film print was used, and it'll usually have it in the technical specs of a movie. So if we do something like, you know, Avengers Age of Ultron here and scroll down, uh, go to the technical specs and we can see here printed film format, Fuji Turner CP 3514 DI. Rise of Skywalker printed on Kodak Vision 2383. Force Awakens as well, Kodak 2383. Here in Resolve, we have the 2383 LUT as well. Okay, so how do we use it? Well, I have a clip here already. I've done some preliminary work to get it how I want it. I've really just kind of gone in and done some work with my primaries, pushed a little bit of color into the image with my color wheels recovered a bit of the highlights, and then lastly, I just went in and used my hue versus saturation curves to just knock down the intensity of some of the colors in the background and just get it to where I want it. Now, it's time to add on the film LUT. What I can do to illustrate the difference here is actually create a new version of this grade. So let's hit Control Y, and that'll add a new version, and then I can toggle between them using Control N. So version one, let's do what I've mainly seen people do at the end of this and add a new node. Uh, and then go to LUTs, find my Kodak, and then apply. Now this obviously doesn't look good. Contrast is blown out of the water and it's very pushed to the point of being unpleasant. So how do we fix this? Actually, before I cover that, just know that I have my timeline set to Rec 709 here. I'm working with a raw clip shot on red. It's also color managed here and I've set it to DaVinci Wide Gamut. So let's go over to version two now and do it the correct way. We'll add another node to the end like last time but we'll apply color space transform here first. I'm not going to worry about the color space. I'm just gonna put Rec 709 as the input gamma, and I wanna turn that into Cineon Film Log for the output. This will turn it into a flat image again, as you can see, and that's actually key for getting the Resolve LUTs to work properly. Now add another node after this one, and we'll go to our LUTs, get the right one, and then apply again. Now, this looks much better, and now we have it sitting nice on our scopes as well. It's not crushed in either direction. You can also see here, skin tones look really nice, and colors are really punchy and cinematic or filmic. Now, one thing, if it still applies too much, a lot of people go into the key here and then dial back the key output gain. Essentially, that's your opacity slider, so what that'll do is just expose your color space transform here on the other side. That's not the desired effect we want. So what we can do actually to fix that is highlight both of our last two nodes because that's where our color space transform and the LUT is. Right click and go to create compound node. So it'll make these two nodes one node. Now when we go to key output again and reduce the gain, it's actually doing what we want it to do by adding less or more of the film emulation. All right, now that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys learned something that you can start applying to your workflows as well. Now, I'm also gonna plan to go live probably within the next week or so. I'm thinking maybe we're gonna go through and edit one of my videos from start to finish and I'll do that live with you guys. 
and then also see if maybe run it like a Q&A if you guys have any questions you can go ahead and ask and I'll go ahead and answer that as we're doing the live stream let me know if you'd be interested for that like I said I've also got a couple of other videos in the works right now for you guys so make sure you're subscribed leave a like down below on this video leave a comment letting me know what your favorite film look is and with that until next time go out there and create something a lot of good